Hey guys, this is Derek from the Wrestling IQ 101 podcast. Just want to let you know about this great partnership that we have with Collar and Elbow now. You can check out all of their great merchandise at collarandelbowbrand.com. Make sure you use the code WIQ101 to get some great savings. Everybody likes saving money. I like saving money. So you should too. Collarandelbowbrand.com, the WIQ101. It's a match made in heaven. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look, wrestling 101, class is in session. Pay attention to the teachings, that's from Andrew and Derek. I mean, these guys making the killer with no competition. Dynamic duo better than the Hardy Boys and the Dudley Boys. Everybody make some noise, mess with them, you get destroyed. They cannot be beat, take a seat. Watch them do they thing on the MIC, face defeat. They cannot be seen like JC. Oh my goodness, it's in killer spree. Yeah? What's up, everybody? This is Steven Lee, aka Lassie Gaia, aka Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Wrestling IQ 101. I'm Andrew and alongside Derek. Yo. And you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wrestling IQ 101. And today's guest is the diligent one, Corey Dillinger, man. What's the juice, man? Not much, man. What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? Yeah, like great day in paradise here. Yeah, definitely. You know, you already know, man. <laughs> oh, man. So, Corey, man, you know, we, we chatted for a little bit now, man. So now we're going to get down to the brass tasks, man. Oh, no. Okay. What's, what's, oh, uh, what's new with you, man? How you... Um, things have been, I, has, a, as somebody would say, like a, like a snowball. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just been rolling down and, and it's getting bigger and bigger. And it's, and for once, you know, with snowballs, you can't control the momentum but i feel like i can control it i feel like, like i have the special needle that can just kill the thread you know <laughs> nice, nice. and um like this past the two weeks ago i was in maine i debuted at a uh, pro wrestling takeover and i really gave people notice and i used that momentum to actually do my own little mini tour so i decided last week on memorial day weekend shout out to all the military personnel that's always mm-hmm. served the country i decided to go down to delaware and make a debut at ocw Ocean Pro, Ocean Coast Pro Wrestling, nice. and let's just say that my first stop was the biggest stop because I got there. Um, I had miscommunication with other promotions down there trying to reach out, and they were giving me no love <laughs> whatsoever, mm-hmm. except for this one guy which I came to to show love with. And I did my match, and I did not just get one opportunity; I got three. Yeah. I've got the course. The promoter wants me to come back for another another show. Rampage Wrestling is a company I was trying to reach out that give me no love, and then all of a sudden the owner saw me and she came to me to the side and said, "Hey, you Corey Dillinger? Like, yes. Like, you did a great job. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, by the way, I'm the owner of Rampage Wrestling. What? What really? It, it, was, it was surreal, and then. I met this gentleman named Vinny C. I might, he might get mad if I mispronounce his name. I'm going to give it a shot. Anyway, Vinny uh, Chukomo. I mean, uh, so, uh, Chuko. Chuko. Yeah, he was actually my tag team partner. Because nice. uh, I was in actually a tag team gauntlet match. And right before he left, he said, man, you did a real good job. You took care of everything. You handled your business. Oh, and by the way, I'm the head promoter for Shockwave Wrestling in North Carolina. So now, because me going at one shot on the whim, I can go down to Delaware. I can go down to North Carolina. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then the next stop, I went to D.C. I did a charity event from Scythe Game. Shout out to Scythe Game in D.C. with my boy Juice, Dwight Jones. Uh, came a big turnout. We had about, I'll say, seven crates of canned food for the homeless. Nice. Like um, wow. in D.C., they have a lot of homeless people, just like it is in New Jersey and North, but... The only time they ever have food is in during the wintertime. And there's plenty enough to stretch, but they don't have nothing guaranteed for people in the summer. Yeah. So they decided to do the charity for that. And that was a big move. And then I uh, did a show right before that was over. I did another show, a small show. Um, I thought it was actually a big promotion, but it was actually a small one. 
and it was actually for um a guy's birthday party. So it was, it was something simple, but uh, it's a point where Maryland, um, I think it was Maryland Wrestling Pro Wrestling, I think MPW, actually was there and said, "We want you to come." Nice. I was like, "Oh." I'm, I'm just I'm just getting off and doing left and right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I just got to relax and then had a nice drive back home. So yeah, yeah that was that was my weekend and the momentum is real. And then we wind to it. I got to work. Um, a guy that I actually look up to in my short career, um, Kyle the Beast. I got to work with him not once but twice. So like grudge matches is are the best ones, yeah. you know. So and we tore the house down on that. Nice, nice. So that's that's what's going on. I, I can tell you so many right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna let y'all get, start asking questions. I'll just run this thing all up day. I, I gotta just say, man, I appreciate you know you, you went out, and you're making your own breaks. You know, you're not just waiting for opportunities. So that's pretty cool, man. Thank Kudos you, thank you. you for that. So yeah, and I was gonna say, uh, you can definitely tell. Like, uh, I think I told you this before, but like we're friends on Facebook, so I always see like. You putting in the work. You're always working out in the gym, and I said like you were losing weight. I saw you looking good. Thank you, thank so, you. So I was just wondering, like, what what's like a normal like like a workout routine for you? Oh, oh God. <laughs> um, you, do you want the lazy bone question or do you want the diligent question? Which one you want? <laughs> we gonna go with diligent. We gonna go right. with diligent. What's, yeah, the, what's the, what's the Not, diligent one? All right, diligent one is real simple. Um, I always try to. I always treat my workouts like a wrestling show. Okay. So if my call time is technically be there by. Um, seven thirty. Uh-huh. I'm there by seven, so okay. I can warm up before the show starts. Yeah, so I'm sure. always doing like a nice stretch. Of course, you know, as a big dude, people think I'm not limber. I'm very limber for a big guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I always bust out a ten to fifteen minute cardio warm up. Nice. It can be mixed up with treadmills, Olympic cools, push ups. Mm-hmm. I try to avoid push ups because I do that into more of the, into the workout, jumping jacks, yeah. um, uh, skate slides. Yeah. Luckily, my school has that, and then. It depends on the day. Like, um, if people don't really notice, I am a big guy. But if you actually look closely, I have very massive legs. Legs to me are very important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Without those legs, I can't walk. Without yeah. those legs, I can't lift. Without yeah. those legs, I can't be me. Yeah. Like, I, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't know what to do if I lost my legs. I'd probably be a, <laughs> a depressed man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, when people think I'm actually lifting heavy, I'm not actually lifting heavy. I lift consistent with control. Yeah. Of course, I weigh. I, I used to weigh three fifty. Now I'm at three oh seven. Nice. Thank goodness for that. And they think like, oh, so you're you're squatting now with weights? No, I'm doing squats, lunges. I'm doing them at high intervals and high intensity, and, and I slow it down just for control. Once a week, I would literally change it up and say, okay, I'm gonna squat. Right. I'm gonna deadlift weight. Oh, I always deadlift weights, but I'm gonna do like the leg press of weights. I'm gonna squat with weights, but it's always self weights because. If you think about it, if you are a big and you lose this weight, which you're planning to do, and you have the strength to hold this weight while you're losing, if it's easier, just keep that plateau. That's when you still need to start keeping weights on, in my opinion. So if I'm 300 now and I'm getting down to 280 and I want to squat 300, all I got to do is put like a little 20 20 pounds on weights on me just to keep that feel as if I was 300 for a high cardio. That's it. And and then once in a while, I'll throw weights on. Uh, Upper body wise, um, that's 24-7 to me. Uh, I have a regimen. I always wake up and do 25 push-ups, 25 sit-ups. Consistently straight through, no questions asked. Some days I can bust it out like that. Some days my body just like you can't take it, and I'm at 20, but I push to hit the five. Yeah. And, and that's been going on right now. I had to start doing that. That's been going on for two and a half weeks. Um, my new trainer was Strive Fitness. Shout out to Strive Fitness and my boy Tom B for putting me on. He doesn't know I did that until I told him, and he said, "You better be doing cardio more than that because yeah. he he cares about body fat, which is." I totally understand, but I'm worried about just conditioning sure my muscles to move around because, yeah, yeah. you know, as wrestlers, we put our body in line 24-7 when we work out and when we train, when we wrestle. And sometimes I feel that my, through my experience, when I have a match mm-hmm. and I'm done with the match, I take a day off. I feel like I took three days off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just, I'm, I'm not even lazy. I just feel like I'm just sore. I'm just trying to recover. It's like, no, got to keep pushing. Got to keep pumping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how. That's my diligence Those workouts. Are, yeah, yeah. You know, the lazy <laughs> lazy bones are just literally this. You better trademark that before somebody takes that. <laughs> diligent workout. I like, the, I like the sound of that right there. You, uh, yeah, yeah, test yourself with Michael Landolo, right? Yeah. He's, like, he, he's pushing people to the brinks and saying he's going to kick, he's been kicking people's ass on uh, 
Yes, he has. <laughs> His Green Machine workout. Yes, Green Machine workout. Like, I'll, I'm definitely going to be the next person. I'm going to see if my diligence can take that machine workout. Like, oh, yeah. And by the way, uh, <laughs> Michael, uh, Michael Lando is actually one of my first big helps when I first started a few yeah. years ago. Yeah. A lot of people don't a lot of people don't know that. Um he was like really the first big guy actually been around that's actually still working. Yeah. So the fact to get his his point of view on certain things as a big guy, because let's be honest, in the wrestling world you think they're big guys, but it's a lot of guys that's like really small compared to me. Yeah. And it's hard to really learn things from them if you don't if you're not them. So yeah. luckily with Michael Lando, he's been my size. We've been close to the same size. We wrestled we worked a few times, and I learned so much from him on the phone, in the ring, sometimes face to face. So, I just want to just put that out there. Like he's been, a, he actually been a help when I first started. Definitely, Mike Fernandez is a great dude for sure. Definitely. Now, so, now what? Do you, now, for you, what is your uh, like? What is your passion with wrestling? Like, what what makes you keep going? What makes you get in the gym and work out? Like, like what what do you hope to accomplish with all of this? Well. This I have a bucket list of things why I wrestle. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I don't want a boring life. Yeah, that, as simple as that. I don't want to be working a nine to five and going home to my wife and kids and say, and then my da- and kids say, "Daddy, what you gonna do?" Like, and, you, and all you are gonna tell them is, "I'm just gonna work." <laughs> no, I don't want to tell them that. I, I don't want to tell them that. I'm not at all. Yeah, you know. And then the other thing is the fact that. I don't have kids, but I love kids, and I mm-hmm. and I always try to inspire kids because I was on dark um, dark truth. I was the only child, mm-hmm. and on my, on my mother's side, and I see people just be manipulated so many ways, and yeah. with the rap music and all that stuff, and I'm like, that's not the wave. Like in my mind, I, I know that's not the wave, so I'll use kindness. Like my one of my favorite um, characters as a kid was actually Goofy, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, this is this is actually people. Somebody told me if you could portray yourself in three characters. Who would they be? Yeah. I had Goofy, Fat Albert, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Muggsy Bowes. Oh, nice. Right. Okay. Yeah. And of course, you already know about how Goofy is. Goofy yeah. is just gullible and all stuff. But one thing you can't take away from that, he's the nicest, most kind-hearted person you ever yeah. meet. He'll give you his clothes if he just saw you going, <laughs> what's the matter? Yeah. Then Fat Albert was the person that was had this type of confidence where people challenge him all the time mm-hmm. and saying like oh you're fat or you're this or you're that and he'll just come with this type of swag that just says i don't need you i'm mm-hmm. still me yeah. and then of course muzzy bulbs you know in the in the world of giants back in the day of nba lifestyles yeah. next to spud mm-hmm. webb he was the shortest man in the league yeah. and he done so much yeah. and he stood humble with it so like because i read his auto i actually did a book report on him when i was a kid that's what we actually like him so mm-hmm. Those three guys made me, and through all that, that's going to be go with wrestling because now I have the chance to aspire kids. Yeah. I have a chance to actually make even even adults. Sometimes adults, I I literally take time if somebody has messaged me and said they have a problem, I will literally actually talk to them. Yeah. I will actually video chat with them if I can or uh, phone chat with them. And say, look, man, what's the problem? And I'll literally tell them, yo, this is what I've been through with wrestling. So maybe you can use that to get yourself out of the situation they're in. Yeah, true, nice. Man, that's pretty cool, Corey. Um, how do you get away with smoking in a school? In a <laughs> 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 oh my god, I knew that was coming. I, how, like, how do people not stop you? I mean, I mean, obviously, I mean, I don't think I would stop you. You're a pretty uh, opposing dude, but I'm surprised no one has I'm come up to you, right? right? <laughs> well, first and foremost. I don't tell people. I just do it. Uh, that's that's yeah. one. <laughs> one, I just do it. You can't plug me out if I don't tell you. Yeah. Two, you know, sm- I'll be honest. Smoking, smoking chemical-based products are bad. Mm-hmm. I- I'll call that out there. Yeah. I vape. Okay. Technically, that is somewhat chemical as well, but that does have a cleaner effect than tobacco from research and also my opinion. Do I vape heavily? No. Mm-hmm. I do it when I'm stressed. I sometimes a gym doesn't always stress uh, help me get my stress out. Yeah. Sometimes I just gotta sit down, go to like one of my favorite spots at like a lake or a beach, and just hit just um just hit the mod okay. and relax. But just to get away with it, uh, I had one person actually try to tell me after the match saying, "Hey, if you come back here, don't do that again." I said, "Okay," did it again. 
Like you can't you can't take that from me. Like that's that's one of my niches to when before I even walk into that ring, before mm-hmm. I even put through my hands on that mat, you gotta know what kind of person I am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the kind of person I am, I am if you think about it, and this is this is very philosophy wise, like the I think about this. So you know how the traditional dad or mother comes home, works their nine to five, yeah. do what they gotta do. They're stressed out. Back in the day, it used to either be sex, liquor, or cigarettes. Like, yeah, yeah. And typically, you see is cigarettes, yeah, cigarettes. as a stress reliever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with me, it's like when I come off through that ring, I'm stressed out. <laughs> but as soon as I step into it. Uh. I'm not stressed anymore. Yeah, I'm yeah. about my business. True. I know what I gotta do. Yeah. I gotta handle my work. And then sometimes, depending if I win or lose, I might make another pull while I walk out. I'm like, yeah. this is some crazy stuff. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I always felt like it, I thought it was like a little bit different because it's vape. I thought vape was like more like I know they were like allowing like e pens inside buildings and stuff like that because it's not like your typical oh, cigarettes or cigars. I, I, I or gotta bring like that, that. Out to you, man. E pens to me is a it's, it's shoot wise under under the radar. E vapes, I mean, e pens to me are just another way to try to sucker tobacco users. Okay, okay. okay. like the whole point of what I was told and, t- and taught about vaping was it was a way for somebody to actually quit smoking. Yeah, period. Because you you get the milligrams you want, exactly. right? And lower the milligrams as you go. Exactly, and they okay. want and they want a, a futuristic way because a lot of people spend a lot more money yeah. on lighters and, and matches. Yeah, yeah. And so. The e pen was made to cut costs on that, but at the same time, they were trying to use that the way to say, "Oh, come right back in." If you think about it, yeah, va- vapes came in and they had all different types, and then a lot of people started just getting either one milligram to zero, yeah. and all of a sudden you start seeing quick checks and other bodegas type saying, "Oh, we got e pens." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, when you vape, is there a certain flavor you use? Oh yes, there is actually. <laughs> it um, I have three flavors actually. Three um, flavors. Yes. Right. Um, <laughs> And they all, they're all depending on my mood. I, I swear. I, I have like three different tanks. And okay. I swear, depending on how I'm feeling, uh-huh. it could be by the crowd. It could be um, the people in the back. It could be just how my day was. Mm. I'll play those through. So the first one is called uh, Ocean Berry Cushion. Okay. And it's weird because, like, you know, it sounds like a... Did you say Kush? Yeah, yeah like, Kush, right? But, yeah. Not, but, but it's not. But it's not. Okay. It's not. <laughs> and um, it, it's like a very beautiful, luxurious... Uh, Fruity pebble blend, like I just yeah. couldn't. And it, it had like a little starburst taste I'm to it. Fresh Flintstone right now. Yeah, but, <laughs> but but imagine that with a starburst splash in it. Like, you know, like, oh, just, man, can you John, imagine that? I'm thinking John Cena, John Cena no, of being insulted by The Rock. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's speaking of speaking of The Rock, the other the other flavor is called um Rocky Road on um, Rocky Down the Road, which okay. is actually like a chocolate flavor. Chocolate, okay. okay, it's actually really good. I only I only use that. When I'm around women who got those light, fruity, flowery <laughs> cologne, and I remember one show um, before the before um, like pre pre show, I oh, came man, out there and cool. chilled, and um, this girl came to me say, "Oh, hey, like hey, Corey," I'm like, "How you doing?" She sat right next to me, and all of a sudden I just smelled this fruit flower aroma, and I was like, "What the?" Hell? And my mind I'm like, "What the hell is that?" And I look at her, she's like this, "Oh, you like?" I'm like. Yeah, in my mind, I'm like, hell no. Nah. That's the smell of seduction. No, that ain't a seduction. That's, a, that's called abduction. You're, you're trying to kill somebody. No. Nah. So, oh, so literally, I ran to the back and I had the rock, I had, I had, I had my rock juice and I immediately dumped out whatever I had because I only had one take. I'm like, nah, I'm a, I'm a, she going to learn today. <laughs> Took that out. Put it because the crazy part is it tastes so good, uh-huh. but the aftertaste, the after smell is like, yeah. So like I'm trying to get like real heat right now, like because yeah. everybody at the time was knowing me had like fruity stuff. So like sometimes they actually want me to blow it in their face. They're like, hmm, what smell is you gonna have today? Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, I got you today, month. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I I did all my smoking. Every person that wanted me to smoke yeah. in their face, I didn't. I literally smoked above their head and let the smell linger. Yeah. So they're like, one kid like. Mm, this chocolate is nasty. Chocolate. Yeah. He yelled at me like, okay, it's working. The girl comes my way. She's all like. All pretty, and the kid next to her is like this. I want to smell. I was like, <sighs> right in her face. She's like, oh my god, oh my god. I was like, now that's the smell of a real man. Oh and I god. walked away into the, into the oh, ring. That was so good. 
Oh. That was so good. Yeah, <laughs> so so we gonna keep this going. We got we got two trademarks going right here. We got diligent workouts. Yes. Now we got diligent vapes as well. Ah, uh, so yeah, we we, it, we about to have a whole business plan by the end of this. Oh god, <laughs> yeah. What's the third one? Third, oh, the third flavor. Oh my god, I call that um, it's literally called pineapple acid. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, pineapple acid is literally just of course pineapple, but oh. it has a it has two variations. It has one that's blueberry oh. blended. Mm-hmm. So and it's a clear co- and the funny part is it only tastes good when you have nicotine in it. Yeah. And I hate nicotine, but like it tastes good. I'm like, I don't like the nicotine, but I'll deal with it. Yeah. yeah. But there's a um but the acid comes with like another variant that's actually pineapple mango. It's a lot of um, pineapple, but like the mango, and then they have like a limity scent. Mm-hmm. Mm. I use that when I'm literally at the beach. Nice. Like, nice. like other than like, and my mood and ring, but like that's the only flavor. If I'm out and about on the beach, I just feel like it's perfect. Nice. I, like, I got a girl's number using that, so I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> literally, no. I was sitting there vaping on on the pier. Girl said, mm, "That smells good. What is that?" And it was a handmade juice too. My boy made it, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Oh, this is handmade." He's like, "Oh, really?" And we just had this conversation. They should know. We were, I was saying some sassy stuff. She literally just took my vape mob and, and blowed on it. Well, well pulled on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> pulled on it. And the way she pulled on, I'm like, oh. oh. <laughs> Is this she trying to tell me something? <laughs> and literally, like, she just winked, gave, slipped her number on my mod. Wow. Smooth. I'm like, wow. yo, like. Like I know she had a piece of paper and she was just writing yeah. stuff because she says like she like she writes journals and notes. Mm-hmm. I didn't know she wrote my number on it when she handed me the model. I looked up like, nice, man, that's very nice. legit, man. You, me, me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You can go to the beach more often, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I actually cut back from going to the beach. I ain't yeah. trying to get in trouble. Oh. <laughs> you know, I'm single. I'm just not trying to get in trouble. Who knows? Right. Another man might come around like, yeah, that's my, that's my girl. I'm trying to talk to her. Listen. I, I don't make them. I, I just stay here. Yeah, probably, I'm pretty sure it'd be bigger than them. Yeah, 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 yeah but, at same, but at the same time, like I don't need it. Like I pick my fights. I don't need to always. Do, I don't need to always put somebody down because they aggravate. You know, uh, annoying. Yeah. Sometimes, like if, if you want to take the woman, go ahead. I am not. Listen, I am a diligent man. I don't need a woman unless that woman's diligent. So that's is what it yeah, is. I hear that. I hear that. So when you were younger, <laughs> let's talk about who were some of your favorites coming up. Oh my god, that, that question always like I, I the, like. Two other podcasts, and that's like the literally was the first question. I was uh-huh. like, "That's all you got, guys." That's all you had. <laughs> but yeah, um, when I was a kid, uh, of course, I was a kid. I need, I had people don't know I had ADHD. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, like um, I, I feel personally now that everybody, every kid in this generation now has ADHD because yeah. of technology. But like, I was labeled as the hyper tension deficit. Like, you yeah. couldn't keep me down unless you had my entertain had me entertained. Yeah, but um. It had to be when I first was, of course, Ultimate Warrior, man. The nice. color, the paint, the music. I swear, I used to hear that song, and my bl- I felt like my blood was, like, kicking up the yeah, overdrive. Yeah, like, yeah. I had candy for, like, two weeks yeah. in one time. Like, I, I'm getting chills now just not thinking about it. <laughs> um, him, then, then, then the Macho Man. Uh, macho Man threw me on guard because, like you just said, like, me, me he was talking earlier, and then... Oh my god, I'm, just, I'm I'm lost for words. He's like, just I'm the cream of the crop, yeah. And I just can't get none enough. And with the whole golden, yeah, and everything else. And I was like, I was like, what the hell is this voice? I'm like, I'm forced to listen to the red. Like, I'm listen, right? I'm putting yeah. my ear on the, on the TV. Like, what are you saying? And all of a sudden, he goes, yeah. I'm like. Oh God, my eye, my ears! Ow! That was the best part of, with him and Ultimate Warrior teaming up, Macho Man. Oh my God! And like you could never understand Both the promo. Them crazy. Neither of them. Yeah, yeah. Neither. Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, yeah. They're very entertaining, though. Yeah. So, and and, then, and then, then when I got a little older, well, I'm more observant. Uh-huh. I started getting into um, um, Junkyard Dog, mm. Brutus the Bar, Beef King. Nice, nice. Um, Jake actually did the snake caught my attention when I saw the first uh, snake pit. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Ooh, this yeah, is different. Yeah. This is different." And then, um, late late in the game, Big Boss Man called me in because at one point I wanted to be an actual officer. Oh, nice, nice, nice. And then you know things tinkered down. And I started realizing characters yeah, and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, that fit. It's faded. Oh, and then uh, you know, I got to see one of my people. I got to see Tony Atlas in person. I got to talk to him. So that nice. was that was a cool. That's awesome. cool thing. Yeah, Tony Atlas is awesome. And, oh yeah, and Jimmy Fly. And I got to see him before um, everything went downhill with that situation. Yeah. He gave some good advice. He was a great guy. Yeah. Nice. So funny because I went to a show with my dad. Must have been like fifteen. 
And I get in the ring, and he's like, thanks for coming to see me, brother. And, like, and I'm like, dad, dad, you call me brother. And my dad's like, yeah, he probably calls everybody that. Like, killed the whole momentum. Killed the whole thing, man. Thanks, thanks dad. Thanks, no dad. love. No, thanks, dad, for killing my guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but now, when you, um, when you talk about, like, characters, how did you decide, like, you were going to be the diligent one? Corey Dillinger. Uh, that's that's a real good question, by the way. Real good question. Speak that out. You can hear me? Yeah, that was a real good question. <laughs> um, that was it through life. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know that I was always a fat, short, chubby kid in my life. And the, I wasn't the popular one. I wasn't the, you know, one with the swag and the images. Mm-hmm. I, I was just consistent about being one thing, and I was being kind. And I was being... Uh, motive and positive so when i was in high school i played for st patrick high school shout out to my all my st patrick alumni who is actually our wrestling fans they didn't tell me that when i was a kid when i was in school but it's all right it's all right <laughs> but oh um, yeah they, um i had a lot of challenges in school like i was bullied in school and um i wasn't bullied not just like personally but i was actually bullied in sports too yeah. but I didn't take that as bullying. I took that as somebody testing my my faith yeah. to sports because you know I love wrestling. Basketball was my bread and butter. That was the thing that if I was ever stressed out, I could just go there, play ball, play yeah. against some guys, yeah. blow off some steam, and smile, no matter win or lose. Because I, I know I gave my effort to go mm-hmm. do what I want to do, mm-hmm. and that lingered all the way to college. And then I played basketball there, and then I realized that I'm dumb. <laughs> I need to go to school. I need need to study because, you know, sometimes you get so into your basketball dreams, you don't realize that reality is hitting you. So uh, I got suspended for school for one year semester, and I worked two jobs that were both literally 50 miles away from my house. Oh, man. Commuting. I was actually uh, Irvington to Menlo Park Mall. Oh, wow. Wow. And ironically, I got, I nailed a job across across the hall from each other, Rainforest Cafe and Stephen Berry's when it was open. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. And I lost, I lost my car, and I, I was going to quit one job, but then I lost my car. I lost both jobs. And I was like, I got to go back to school. Yeah. I got to do this right. So uh, it took me 10 years to get my associates and my bachelor's. Nice. And I realized I learned one word that stuck out to me since then. That was diligent. Yeah. And somebody said, you got to be diligent when you do stuff like this. I was like, what you say? You got to be diligent. I was like, I'm going to keep that word. Yeah. I like that word. And I used that everything I could. Every time I was stressed out, I literally had a note saying, are you diligent enough? Yeah. Do you want this bad enough? And it, it just motivated me so much to get through. And then um, I was going, I was in a pledge life. <laughs> I'm not going to say what organization, out of respect. Yeah. But um, the line name they gave me was John Dillinger. Nice, nice. You know nice. what I'm saying? So um, I, I saw, I looked at his backstory and I found he's very, he's a genius man. Like he, everybody think he's muscle, but he's not. Everybody else did his muscles for him. He just did the brains. Yeah. So I was like, that helped me motivate more to just know, I got to use my mind more than just my muscles to get around in life. Yeah. So I got my degree and everything else. And then right before I got my degree and my char- everybody asked me about my character, they said, what you want to be? And I was like, I don't know yet. Because I, I wanted to make sure I was confident. And then actually, you know, um, the promoters at uh, ECPW gave me Bad news, Dillinger. <laughs> because I, at the one point, you can clearly see if I, if you see me have this wolfed out more, you can see a little resemblance of Bad News Brown. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay, cool. I was, I was down with that. I was down with that. Oh, I got spam people calling me. Put that down. <laughs> um. So I got frustrated, uh-huh. and I think that anger built me up to make sure you know this is the, this is the character just for me because I lived this character all my life. There's no point for me to actually be fake about it because I'm not bad news. You, I have a bad side. And everybody does, but mine is more vicious. I just don't need to put it unless I have to. So diligent was the one for me because I felt like being in this wrestling business was like me being on, on a basketball court all over again. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows me. Nobody knows my talents. Nobody knows my patented moves. They don't know my crossovers. They don't know my spin moves. They don't know my, my fadeaway jump shot. Mm-hmm. And I just start from scratch. Mm-hmm. And I and after a year, putting it to the side and bringing it out, it started pulling it full full fruition. Like uh, at one point, I was telling him. The whole point of um, dil- being a diligent man, I want to become the Suge Knight of wrestling. Nice. I, I know that sounds a little weird because if you have, if people know if you guys know what Shug, who Suge <laughs> yeah, Knight yeah, is, yeah, of course. That man backhand women and hit people with cars, but <laughs> <laughs> dangle people from windows, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. But you guys got to understand, like if you actually look back to see how he did things, he had a code. Yeah. 
Yeah. He had he had an honor code to certain things, and and I respect that. And a lot of people didn't see that part of part of him because all he was exploring him was his negativity that he embraced. Mm-hmm. So that's how diligence came into my character, and that's how it sticks to me because it's really just me. Yeah. It's just that I try to beat it to every single person. Stop following what somebody else tells you mm-hmm. unless you believe it in yourself. True. Yeah. And I, and I think being diligent is believing one thing. It's if you don't believe, then you can't follow up. And that's not being diligent. Definitely. Yeah. I like so I'm asking you, you had a basketball background. Who are you going with now? Golden State or the Cavs? Oh I'm going with neither. This is a work. <laughs> this is a work? <laughs> this is a work, brother. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Listen. No way this happened four years in a row. This has never happened before. There's no way this has happened it's four happen, years in a row. It's going to happen again, but it's going to be with uh, the Lakers next year with with uh, LeBron. It's going to be LeBron and the Cavs. That's, that's serious. It's let's not go even deep. the Cavs. Guys, it's LeBron go, and Golden State. Let's go deeper here. Like both, First of all, both teams are very talented. And they both do their thing. They're both getting paid at the end of the day. Yeah. So that's nothing. Yeah. But let's go deeper. The NBA, the last time they ever had... A game, a, um, a, a finals, a Eastern or Western Conference finals, exactly. not hitting Game Seven was two years ago with Golden State when they blew out. I forgot who they who they was uh, playing, but they blew them out. But somehow Cleveland and and I think I, I think um it was Cleveland and some other team somehow made the Game Seven. I'm like. Clearly, LeBron's team is way more better. I'm not even a LeBron fan, but like that team is way more better. And how did he mix this to go to Game Seven? This is money. Yeah. This is business. Yeah. And I just start noticing that every year. It's I was like, something, man. Think about this. You gotta be pretty impressed though. He played the whole game, LeBron. Though that was pretty impressive. You have well, to admit. I, I give LeBron his respect. LeBron is LeBron. He's the, Le- he's the best <laughs> player in the world. He said it. LeBron. Is LeBron? You can't categorize him in any other adjectives mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. actions. He's just LeBron. Yeah. Now you can't say king, but he's LeBron. He's LeBron. I'm gonna call him king. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> okay. <king. laughs> what other sports do you like? I mean, um, you, you said you you're a Met fan, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, is that? That is horrible. Yeah, no, no, it's not horrible. Met leave, fan. Leave him alone. Leave him alone, man. Yeah. Met fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ask you who my favorite yeah. team is. You across the you across the river, aren't you? The best team in baseball. You pitch right, boy. Yeah, yeah, you pitch right, boy. Right. <laughs> The you pitch right, boy. The best team. <laughs> do you know? The, do, do you know why I like the Mets? Why is that? Because I played baseball when I was a kid, uh-huh. and ironically, I was on the Red Sox. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. But um, when I first learned baseball, the first person that caught my attention was Mike Piazza. Oh, yeah, nice, see, nice. the greatest and, player of all time. And like literally, I say he's the most underrated player in, ever. But yeah. like, I, but I respect his loyalty. He had offers to go to different teams. He said, "I'll stick with." Uh-huh. Yeah, and that made me start liking them more, and then I started learning history. Then I learned Dow Strawberry. I'm like, oh, that's the OG right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I started looking for and saw how he got such a bad record. I was like, uh, <laughs> I got the loyalty, loyalty. I can simply just jump to the Red Sox because I actually used to play as a Red Sox yeah, kid. Yeah. But I'm like, now nah, I'm gonna stick to loyalty. I'm gonna do loyalty. I'm gonna do it right. <laughs> and you know, we had our good run. The past few years, you yeah. gotta be diligent to be a mess man. To the, fan, to the, yeah? to the hey, thank you. You gotta be diligent to be a mess man. Yeah, I remember that one time that I think uh, the Mets had a better record than the than the, than the Yankees. Oh, yeah, 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 Oh, that's right now. That's crazy. Oh, oh my God. Man. A typical Yankee. It's <laughs> funny, Piazza did fit because Piazza was my. I went to his first game as a Met. Mm-hmm. I was oh. there when they retired his number, and I was nice. there when he went to the Met Hall of Fame. I, you know, it was just. Uh, and most of his. I wish I could switch lights with you right now. Yeah, I wish my, it was Freaky Friday. Yeah, you could see those moments. You yeah, know? My, <laughs> well, I couldn't remember. Like, my, my dad took me, I must have been in like third grade to Shea Stadium. Mm. And um, I was like, oh, yeah, we got him for like the next couple of years. We're gonna be great, and then sure enough, I mean those, those we years. We were great. Yeah, those just not great enough. Yeah, I mean those years were uh, some of my favorite growing up. And then uh, I want my uncle when they retired his number, and I took my uh, my dad. I bought him tickets. We uh, uh on like sub We paid like extremely a lot of money. For of course, I, I would assume so. <laughs> I would assume. But it, so. it was worth it because you know just seeing him on the on the mm-hmm. podium like. Uh, like we just went full circle, you know, from the beginning. So most of his games as a Met, mm-hmm. and then uh, just to see him get 
inducted and then the number the number was really awesome though like, i bet was, it would i would cry yeah, i would yeah. cry if i saw it so, um actually that poster behind us the piazza thing behind it is the embroidment of his um 31 <coughs> wow yeah yeah they were giving out cards and stuff like that so yeah that's, 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 that's sexy <laughs> that is se- I can't say that's lit. That's sexy, <laughs> right nice, there. Man, nice. And it's really because the Mets don't really retire numbers, so it's kind of important that's a that big they, thing. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So, I mean, so, hey, if, they, if it's not the Yankees, I'll, I'll go with the Mets. Uh, well, it's fine. In that case, then you gonna hate me as well because um, the other team, I'm a football fan as well. Uh-huh. Who's that? I'm a Jets fan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, do, okay? So I, I, I see what's going on. You guys are just basically like the Brother fan guys. favorites yeah. of the B teams in New York. <laughs> the B team. Oh my god! <laughs> so the Mets and okay. the Jets. Okay, so now, actually the now, best team. I'm not a Giants fan. No, by the way. I'm actually gonna back that statement. They're the best teams. <laughs> if you ask uh, uh, Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel, that's right? true. They're the B team. <laughs> true, but I thought you were gonna say Joe Namath. I thought you were gonna say it too. But no, seriously, that's the reason why I actually love the Jets because uh-huh. my house, my family's house. It's a giant house. All giants. It's all giants. And one eagle. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, well, that one eagle is happy. Yeah, I know. Uh, right now. Right? And um, <laughs> I remember when we first started, I, I, I didn't know nothing about football. And we was playing Madden, mm. 1999. Uh. Classic. Love that game. And they said, what team you going to play with? I had no nothing about football. Mm. So I did the typical thing that anybody do. Girls do this all the time. What outfit look nice? <laughs> so I I saw the Buffalo Bills jerseys. I'm like, yo, these. Oh, and later on, I saw the jerseys and they, and they transitioned the colors. I'm like, oh, this looks sexy. Yeah, I'm yeah. playing with them. I'm playing with them. And I started learning how they. I'm like, yo, this is, yo, this is actually challenging. Oh crap. Yeah. And then I start. I went to my first Jets game, and they won. Mm-hmm. It was a big upset expedition game. I was like, I love the Jets. Yeah. And then I, it's, I think I said that I thought was a, I thought it was a jinx because after I said that they started losing. It. <laughs> <laughs> they start losing. Oh, yeah, we've had a couple of good seasons, so yeah, we had. Going, we're gonna have a good one this year. I, yeah. I just, I keep telling people we need, we need to stop as a, as fans. We need to stop saying Super Bowl. Just say make it to the AFC Finals. That's it. That's it. Make, make it to the it playoffs. Do anything. We yeah. had some good seasons. Baby steps. Baby yeah. steps. Sells and. Yeah. Uh, Sanchez. Yeah, yeah, yeah Sanchez, but we, we we had great players, but bad coaching. Now it's the yeah. point where we actually got rid of the coaching. Now we have players. Yeah. We, we'll see what happens. You know, yeah. I'm counting down. I'm counting down yeah. the time. See, the thing that's tough about New York is, like, New York is, like, a hard place to be at because fans in New Jersey, New York, even Philadelphia area, like, we expect so much, and we want to win now. It's like that whole culture. We're just so used to that. And I think the Yankees play a big part into that because they always won. So you expect, like, yeah. If you're a New York team, like, you got to win. You're a big market. We want you to win now. So, fans are just crazy. It's funny you say that. Then Don't forget, you got to add New England, too. In New England? Yeah, yeah. Because remember, how many, how many times the Celtics get, um, got close and they got yeah, ticked off? Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Like, they're, like, they're like, oh, my God, why you can't be like the Patriots? Deflate yeah, the ball. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is. You it's create right, that I, culture. I was, like, telling my dad, like, the Knicks – can just be terrible for like the rest of the time, and, and those and they'll still sell Madison Square Garden. Of course, yeah, because we yeah. have the building. That's all <laughs> that matters. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. Like they don't have to worry about anything. They have the garden behind them. They, they don't have to worry. Like they'll never. How long have they been terrible? You know, it's, it's, it's like Patrick Ewing. Right. Um, <laughs> ever since the ever since I, I call it's it ever since up. the famous finger roll miss, they got bad. Yeah. If anybody remember when Patrick Ewing could have flushed it, he's just like. I'm just be fancy. Mm-hmm. Whoop. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> and even when they had bright spots with like Lynn, you know, Jerry mm-hmm. Lynn, they just couldn't capitalize. With that oh, kind of I mean, I can tell you, no, that's easy. The, the catches uh, before basketball wise, I'm actually originally a Charlotte Hornets fan. Okay, so back like I said, Muzzy Bowles, Larry Johnson, mm-hmm. Oak, PJ Brown, you name it. When they left, I had nobody. I was a lost dog. I was like a free agent and yeah. trying to find a home. Yeah. My grandma said. Come over here. <laughs> and guess what she is? She's Knicks. Exactly. Yeah. She's a Knicks fan. So I, at that time, frame, sure. I started learning Latrell Speedwell. Like, I did my backstories and learned, yeah, you know, John yeah. Starks and all of them. But then that's why I was talking about now when you had uh, Latrell Speedwell. My, my, one of my favorite guards, Starberry. Yeah. Oh, I love that man. Yeah, Stephon yeah. Marbury. I said, yeah, Dude. Yeah. Um, he's still playing to this day. I, yeah, but he's not getting. Oh, he's still getting he arrested. Over, he over in like China. And stuff. Yeah, he's getting arrested. <laughs> he's getting arrested, he's getting arrested. <laughs> he's getting arrested though. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like watching all those guys and and I start seeing like the grind, like because yeah. let's be honest, when, at that time frame, those guys were there. That's when street ball was actually being established. Yeah, and that's when everybody would start understanding the real grind of basketball. Everybody thought it was just go to a school, mm-hmm. go to an organization, play, put your heart out. No, you had guys that literally was they had nothing. And made something because some of those players, like for example, 
Ron Austin, skip to my Lou, yeah. made it to the NBA League. Yeah. Played for the Milwaukee Bucks. Mm-hmm. Made his money. Um, half man, half maze was so close. Yeah. And uh, who else? Uh, even Hot Sauce, but Hot Sauce was so ignorant. He just, yeah. You know, he, he just stopped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just said, I'm going to stick to do this because I can do this legally and I, I'm not going to make no fault, no uh-huh. fouls or turnovers. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So I'll ask, uh, I'll ask another generic question. Mm. This is this is a easy one. How did you get started into wrestling? Who did you get trained by? How did how did you get into it? Maybe it's not an easy one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, like there's certain doors I have to keep closed. I got you. I got you. But got um, you. the uh, the company that, that got me into the company was actually East Coast Professional Wrestling (ECPW). It's yeah. located in Jersey at Lake in Lake Hiawatha. Um, I went there through a smaller group of people that I know. And they just saw something in me. And literally, the guys I was trained with initially mm-hmm. went to Caruso and said, yeah, I think he got something. Yeah. Like, he's, he, he, he's doing stuff. Mind you, this is only within a month. This yeah. is not like somebody saying, I, through the break of the year, uh, the months. This yeah. is literally, this this whole duration. My first match, for me coming into that company, to my first match, was within a month and a half span. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Literally, month <laughs> and a half, maybe two, a little close two months span. So, uh, you know, going through the bumps. Learning, like, yo, this guy knows about really well. He's not, he's not complaining. He's, he's working. He's doing it. He can sell. He can, he can do whatever he wants. He can, he can react. He can think. And then all of a sudden, I get a call. Um, I get a pull to the side by Caruso and say, hey, Corey, I need you to come training more often. I'm like, cool. But I need you to come on a daytime. Yeah. I mean, they, weekdays. I'm like, what? Weekdays. Oh, oh, okay. Once he left, the whole people I was training with just applauded and said, dude, he just asked you to basically go on his main roster. I was like, what the hell? Like, and, I, and in my mind, I'm like, I guess that's what we were the NXT of his of his company, yeah, yeah, and I didn't, you know, it, NXT didn't exist at the time. Well, they did, but they weren't publicized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I trained with some of the guys. I trained with Kenny Bangle. I trained with the Graysons. I, I trained with Tony Vega. I, I trained with Sonny. I trained with Ever Cross and Colossus. And next thing I know, two weeks straight later, hey, I got you're booked. I got you wrestling. The pun- uh, t- um, Punisher Martinez. Oh, wow. I'm like, I don't have any gear. That's your problem. Figure it out. I'm like, what? I'm like, what? I'm like, I, 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 I don't have a character. Like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> so, luckily, Aztec Warrior, Izzy Reyes, Colossus, and those guys actually helped me out a lot. <coughs> Got me some, like, emergency gear. Yeah. Um, oh, they trained me. They actually helped me train a little bit longer, a little bit harder to get through the match. And then I'm all prepared for this match, and he didn't show up. Oh, wow. Because that was the day Punisher Martinez committed to Moss Factory. Oh, man. Wow. Damn. Yeah. So, um... People say, Corey, you supposed to have a squash match that day. I was like, well, maybe in, in Karma, I wasn't meant to have one because yeah. um, I ended up working a, a great wrestler named Solda Oro, based in Connecticut, great worker. He gave me the realization about wrestling in a crash course world. Like, so, so technically, how everybody else had been wrestling like months, months, and they get their first match. No, I was literally learning as I go, and I think it was meant to happen because I'm like, oh, I'm 30 years old now. Like, I know if I would have try to do the traditional route to some places. Not saying I wouldn't do it. Yeah. But if that would have happened, I probably wouldn't be who I am now. I wouldn't have been so aware of how the business really is. Yeah. Even though, I'll be honest, I think once you're older, you're more observant. Instead, when you're younger, you're ready to just jump in there and do whatever you want. But the older you get, you will look first before you even jump. Yeah, mm-hmm. true. Exactly true. Yeah. How was it wrestling Matthias class? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I gotta take a drink. Hold on. <laughs> I need vodka. Hold on. Uh-huh. He's uh he's Jewish, so he has a very unique offense. <laughs> um work uh, wrestling this guy is <laughs> is a great balls of fire. That's the best way I can explain it, because you're thinking, I'm so used to wrestling guys that's gonna be intense, ready to go, and all of a sudden you see this guy go. Hey, I'm Jewish. What are we gonna do? I'm like, what? What, what, what I'm gonna do with this guy? <laughs> then he throws this hat that you look at it and think like this fluff ball of a hat. You throw it and you pick it up like you feel like y'all guys know Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. So what was that room in Dragon Ball Z that when they train in the high, uh, the high body tra- high body chamber? No, yeah. one be- no one before that when they was in the capsule and they had to change the gravity. I don't know. Wasn't that that was on the ship? Wasn't it? You know, you know the ship, but like yeah, but like it had that that room. I know that about. hat felt like that because you're looking at it like, oh, this ain't nothing. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 
<laughs> oh God. Yeah. I luckily I train. I'm heavy and I work. I did not fall off. I literally held that thing. Yeah. The first time he caught me. Second time I threw it back at him. And he looked like, oh, really? <laughs> Think I'm gonna do it twice? <laughs> but yeah, working him was a great fun experience. Um, he his mindset is very, very well to the crowd. Like he knows how to please the crowd and please himself. Mm-hmm. Like like saying like great people like Al Snow and some other great workers. If you can't please the people or please the person you're with, how can you please yourself? And I know people say in this business you're out for yourself, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day we're teamwork. Yeah, and I mean we work hard as tag teams. We work hard to you know get the crowds going. You know at the end of the day we do what we do to make this a entertainment thing. Even though we still want to keep this competitive as possible, yeah. we know it's we, we entertain. Nice. So let's take a little bit of a swing to uh, UWA. Oh God! Uh, you and your your buddy, your partner Hedges. Yeah. How'd you guys form that team? Um, that team was actually thrown by management. Okay. Straight like that. Um, you guys are good together. I like yeah, the team. we are. Yeah, we are. Um, I was trying to get in the door. Look, this this is literally the legit backstory. I got in the door. Um, uh, my first match was Crazy Ivan, and that was definitely a. You know, a good experience. I, I wrestled him time to time ago. He's a great worker. You know, I learned I learned some real physical stuff about him yeah. and about what I need to do. And then all of a sudden, I got into the roster slowly, and they actually had me had a match with him mm-hmm. when he was the champion. And I'm thinking, like, oh, this is perfect. Yeah, it's my, actually my first legit singles title match. Mm-hmm. I'm ready. I'm about to tear it up. No. No. <laughs> I literally fell short. I literally fell short. Like, that was the first time I ever got German. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, go back to the archives. Check out check out UWA Elite Network. I yeah. swear. Or check out um, the other channels we have for that. You literally see Hedges German me. That was the first German I've ever took in my career. And I wasn't even set for it. Like, I was just like, what the fuck? I kid you not. Yeah. And the way I folded, I didn't do, like, the traditional, like, spring legs up. Yeah. I still, like, an accordion, like, oh, man. Oh, like, Damn, that's how it feels. <laughs> Damn, that's how it feels. So I guess after that match, um, and after he had his little run going on, he started saying like, "Yo, Corey's good." Mm-hmm. And I know he has a he has a lot of leeway with the company. So I guess he set a segment up on for me saying like, "I didn't know he was coming out." I was just told that Corey, you gotta make your you gotta make yourself known. Here's your chance. Sean Damage is actually making his go home speech because he wants to spend time with his kid. Mm-hmm. Cause he just got a, he just became a father. Hey, shout out to you, Sean. I know you doing being a great father. I see what you do on Snapchat. And um, I had to do something, so I literally just ran in there. I didn't know what to do. He just looked at me. He started swinging at him at me, and I literally just threw him to the ropes. And the first thing I just thought about, like Farouk, boom! I just spine busted him. Mm. And as soon as that happened, everything started flowing in my brain. I'm like, I'm about to knock this block off. I'm about to do my. I don't do this often, but I have a discus forearm that's called a shotgun, the spinning mm-hmm. shotgun. Mm-hmm. And I was about to do it, and then Hedges just came out of nowhere and said, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm about to kick your ass too. You want the sauce? You want the sauce? <laughs> and all of a sudden, he turned around and just decked the hell out of him. I'm like, I did not see that coming. Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he just looked at me like this. And I'm like, oh, let's roll with this then. All right, let's yeah. roll. Nice. And then we just rolled with it. We had a great rivalry with the protein pack. Um, that was the first time I ever saw a man get busted open bad oh, live. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, yeah, um, we was at the Melans, um, Middle, uh, Middlesex County Fair, which is actually, um, coming up this year. Yeah. And we had a street fight and they tried to be, um, bro tried to be funny and try to pop a John Cena pit portrait over his head. Oh, man. But, uh, they messed up. And hit them off the head with the frame, and he got oh, busted open like man. real good. Yeah. To the point we're just, I'm just staring at him like at the street fair, right? Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, what the fuck? I'm about to go ham. I'm about to go like that. I'm about to kick around. He's like, I leave so put his hand at me like this. I'm like, oh, you're an OG man. Oh man. And we finished that match strong, and we found out that man came out with like I think nine nine stitches in his head, nine staples in his head. Oof. I felt like he did his own death match. <laughs> You, you teamed up with Jordan Oliver, right? That was actually yeah. first. I remember watching you and him together. Yeah, they thought they thought um, we would be like the perfect Robin Big. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Oh, my God, man. You know what I'm saying? But the catch One is, of my favorite shows, by the way. One of my favorite shows, definitely. Like, which, uh, which I agree, you know. Um, Jordan Oliver, on the way, 
Like, came a long way. Definitely. Man, that's like when I see somebody who's hungry and still shows humble actions, he's literally like the first three that's on my yeah. on my list I think of. Other than himself. Like I just literally see him just grinding. Now he's doing this thing at CCW. He's branching off of some of the places. It, like hell, like when I did my debut in I think I did my debut in Maine, that's when I saw him. I'm like, oh you're in Maine? Yeah, I've been up here. I'm like, See, you're quiet, you're just grinding. I, I didn't even know. Yeah. You're doing your own thing. And and then we, of course, we didn't have our 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 thoughts because, like, I, I'm ready to make moves and win. This guy just like, yeah, I got this. I'm like, stop it. Just stop. <laughs> and then, you know, we lost a few times. And, of course, I blamed him because it was really his fault. Yeah. And I just did what I did. And oh. to the point I had that went solo. But, you know, wrestling that man, fighting that man, Sometimes you remind me. It sometimes reminds me to keep grinding because, like, there's times I, remember, I look back at old, uh, old matches we had when he's just digging deep and just, just tearing my face up and my forearm and my neck and my forearms and and I just see him out of nowhere. And I just deck him one time, drain, drain the jaw, oh, boom, man. he out. <laughs> but then I I be looking at beforehand like that's how life is. Like not to go like very philosophical and stuff, but like we do all these comebacks mm-hmm. and we fight and then all of a sudden we just we think we get everything we got and then all of a sudden. Yeah, you back down again. Yeah. So your next question is, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna get back up? Or are you gonna take? A, are you gonna take a three count? Yeah. And like to me, Jordan Oliver is the epitome of that. Yeah. Like he'll keep coming. Same same thing with um his his good friend uh get um it's Casey it's Navarro. Yeah. Like I rode with him. I don't know if y'all know, but me and him actually have road trips together. We actually went up to Maine, and like we I didn't realize me and him have a lot in common. Yeah. A lot. Like. Like philosophy wise and actions and how we portray the wrestling business and how we want to actually get ourselves in, yeah. it, it is very it's very magical how you sometimes just fry with somebody for five hours you learn way more than you need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's why it's cool because uh, you know piggyback what you were saying there was a match at the fair too, uh, Jordan Oliver versus Bose. Mm-hmm. And, you, and looking at it, you're like this is a mixed mm-hmm. match, but it's one of those phenomenal matches. You're just like this guy just. Just there's no quitting this guy, so it's it's absolutely man. Um, you talked about Kyle Abuse earlier, you know, you mentioned him for a second. You know, how, how important he has he uh, been, and why, why one, why, I mean, you could see why he's been one of the views that you would want to have, right? Absolutely. Um, it, it's just you know, when you wrestle someone, you always try to be the best for yourself, but when you wrestle someone, you you have that respect. You like I'm not trying to wrestle just for my standards. I'm trying to wrestle for their standards. Mm-hmm. And Kyle the Beast is definitely one of them. Like I remember first time seeing him, and I'm like, oh, this guy got a lot of potential. He's talented. And I then I realized how long he's been in the business. I'm like wow. And then I saw a picture when he first started. I'm like wow. He was me when I was a kid. He was a chunky monkey. I'm like oh okay, <laughs> all right. And now he became this chunky monkey to like this this ape. Like, even though he's a beast, but I still call him, he's like an ape. Yeah. He's like a silverback. Like, he just, he and he's agile. He's like, I'm one of those rare ones that I can flip backwards. I don't need to roll forward. Yeah. And, and wrestling him is just like something that just made me feel like I had to step up my game. Like, mm-hmm. literally. And I remember the first time we wrestled was actually at JCPW last year, 2017, in the summer. And that people don't know, that's the first time I was actually with Babyface. I was actually a good guy. Mm-hmm. It was weird. It's very weird because yeah. I had people cheer for me. I was like, let me embrace it. Let's, let's, <laughs> try it. let's do it. And of course, Kyle's Kyle. You know, he, he got his following. And yeah. we tore that place up. And literally, that whole match, when it was supposed to be a street fight, we only used a chair. And we never used it till the end. Like, it was to the point where we just, we just kept stopping each other and, and milking moments. And that was the first time I actually got busted open. Legit. No mm. gig, no nothing. Like, right under my eye. Mm. And when I kicked out, I opened my eyes. You know the old saying, you'll see red when yeah. you're in rage? Yeah. I see red, I was terrified. Oh, man. Because I'm thinking, like, yo, did my, did my rectum, uh, rector, yeah. whatever, got busted. And, and then Ryan um, Ryan T. Uh-huh. actually said, it's under the eye. I was like, under, under. Right, let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> like, my, that's when I had my moment. I'm like, yeah, let's keep going. And we finished it up strong, and I managed to get the victory. I was happy. And then we had our rematch this year, and he definitely stepped his game up since then. And he took me out. I was like, "This is not good." <laughs> so we got um another one coming up actually in November. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know if any other promoters are going to try to book us against each other, but I would love that third third time the charm finish. Nice. See how that goes. How do you prepare for him now? Oh, now? As he is the beast, uh-huh. I have to think like a diligent beast. Like, I have to embrace what he does. Mm-hmm. And that's like sometimes pushing out my realm. Like, I'll be honest, he's very acrobatic. Mm-hmm. Um, I put out a little bit of my uh, acrobatic spil- skills. But like, now I just have to like, balls to the wall. I just got to give it everything. I don't care what a kid. Like, you might literally see me hit a, a elbow drop. You might mm-hmm. see me hit a rainmaker. Yeah. Wow. I'm serious. That's like, that's that's how far I have to go with this man. Like, I usually don't like going on the top rope. I'm not saying I'm afraid of heights. Yeah. I've been there. It's just the fact that I feel like my, my main core is just hit my two hands and my feet on the ground, and I'm just hitting my hitting my blows. Boom, just hitting them. But with him, it's like, I got to take a risk. Yeah. I can't just stick to my game. So right now, I've been, I've been working on a lot of out-of-the-box tactics for me. And, and, and I promise you, they're not dirty. They're not dirty. They're clean. Yeah. They're clean. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I just, just trying to make sure, at the end of the day, you're in respect. And with him, I want to earn that respect. I got to respect myself. I got to love myself. Hell, if I didn't love myself, I wouldn't be in this where I'm at right now talking to you guys. Mm. But just sometimes having that respect that you get from others, that's what I'm trying to get. So I'm hoping when that match happens, he shook my hand before, but I want him to like pull, like pull and say, you you earn my respect. You are a brother to mm. me. Yeah. And, you know, that's how it is. Yeah, definitely. Now, let's talk about uh, the GTS. <laughs> How look at that face. <laughs> what is it? What's up? <laughs> I was just gonna say your experiences, how you how you got involved in it. Uh oh, GTS usually usually a lot of people it helps a lot of people out. No, GTS like is a wonder, as well. GTS is a wonderful platform if you definitely need that exposure yeah. or experience. Cause like, you know, you don't know who you can meet in GTS. You can meet James Ellsworth. You can meet Robbie E. You can meet so many. But um, I did it because I needed something. I uh, said before, I'm trying to branch out on my own. I'm trying to get my own stuff. Because mm-hmm. at the time frame when I was wrestling, I first started, you mm-hmm. had the new gen. You mm-hmm. had Kenny Bangle, Aaron Bradley, the Grayson, Sonny Kiss, yeah. Prince Akana, and Michael Lando. Yeah. They was tearing up everything. And in the back of my mind, I didn't want to really follow them because yeah. I feel like I was, the, in my personal opinion, I was the, going to be the tail of the new gen. I'm like, I don't want to be a tail. Yeah. I, I'd rather be part of the system or on my own system. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I decided to do Grim a few times, and I literally don't touch Twitter. I yeah. hate Twitter. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I only had like a 200 friends and, well, followers. And then all of a sudden, I did three tapings for them. And that 200 literally went 2,000 in two and a half weeks. I didn't even touch my tw- I even looked at I literally don't even have the app. I look on the browser. Yeah, That's how much I had to look at it. Then I decided to download it. And I looked at it and went like, how many people? <laughs> what the? Yeah, man. Oh, my God. I was, just, I was like, you know what? I made an investment myself. No matter what people say about the company, yeah. I made an investment myself. I will say they do sometimes go way off the wall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I know why, because like I said before, I said before, everybody has ADHD now. So it's like, you got to look at it. You got to look at it. And I look at it in a production point of view. You can't come off with like 12 minute, 30 minute matches and expect them to be drawn to your seat. Sometimes you got to do that 10 minutes. Everything's all over the place. So they can be looking. Like I said, Dragon Ball Z. I love, I love it. I think that's the epitome of ADHD. Remember where, um, I know you're not familiar with it as much. I understand. I understand. But um, do you remember the scenes when he like turns Super Saiyan and they're yeah. so fast that they're just hitting? All you yeah. hear is like boom, 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 boom. That's, you don't even that's, that's yeah. like <laughs> think about it, that's like the concept of ADHD. Yeah, like kids won't be entertained unless they're going like this. Yeah, yeah, all over. It's moving their head, uh-huh. and that's how GTS does. So they draw a lot of those kids, uh-huh. and sometimes that's what's needed. Like if you look closely in, in the WWE and TNA. A lot of their matches are storyline based, and then you see some that's like strictly like wow spots, but they do it in such a manner yeah. that you don't think it's a spotty match. It's just like it's just simple, mm-hmm. except for two two five live. Like yeah. they're clearly oh, yeah. you know all over the place. But like yeah. for the guys who's in the main um not main roster, but not in, in the Raw roster or SmackDown roster, they some of them have that same concept, but they just slow it down to catch those kids. Yeah. So it's the same thing. So I think Grim's doing a great thing. I have a lot of people ask me when am I coming back. Mm-hmm. To GTS, I I I don't know. I, I at one point I was trying to come back because I heard they had um a clown 
and people don't know when I first came there, I was actually the clown patrol. Oh man, <laughs> I hate clowns. I hate clowns. Hate clowns. I'm, I'm serious. Like I don't get scared. I literally will punch a clown. I remember um, oh, I went to I went, I went to <laughs> scare fest. I went to fright fest at Six Flags, and they had a and it, they had Jason. I was terrified. They had a Freddy Krueger. I was terrified. They had a clown behind me. I turned around and punched them in the nuts. Oh, I didn't man. care. I was a kid though. I was like, Ooh! I was a kid. I didn't oh, care. Geez. I don't like clowns. That's funny. Oh my and, god. And you know, <laughs> yeah, I see a clown on your thing. I'm gonna leave that be. On your, on your, on your computer. Yeah, he, that be. Cool. he cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, no but yeah that's what it is. And then I, since that segment was done, I guess I need it. But um, these two guys, uh, Jay Evans, the key Jay Evans, and um, Joe Wolf. Um, uh-huh. I know they lost the titles recently, but uh, they were annoying ass pricks. Like, and I remember when I was taught when I went to GTS, and um, key, and Key was actually a real cool dude. Like. He wanted to learn. He actually asked for a lot of my advice, and I mm-hmm. took that as a lot of humbleism because, in my eyes, I'm learning just like you guys. But you come to me as if like I'm the OG of this business, yeah. and of course I, you know, I humbly gave him all the knowledge I can. But then all of a sudden we fell off, and he just started acting like an asshole. I was like, huh? And you think you legend? Wait for it, Dairy. And I was like, you want know, you like legend like Dairy, Dairy like Milk? It's like no, we're legendary. We just pause. I'm like. That, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> and, and, look, and look at it now. That thing is like so over. Yeah. It's so freaking over to the point where, like, I just said, like, Yo, you changed, man. I don't like how you acted. Cause I remember he actually took the title from me when I was actually there. And I was like, I let it go. It's business. But, like, now you act arrogant. Now they lost the belts. And uh, me and JJ decided we're actually gonna come back. Well, I talked to him about it and said, let's go back for this one time, take care of our business, and see what happens after. So yeah. like I'm calling it now, if Jay Evans and Joe Wolf is looking at listening to this podcast, which I know you are, I'm coming for you. I can't say that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's another thing. He called me the N word. Oh, oh man. Yeah, man. The first time we actually had that match, he actually called me the N word. Oh shit. He, he called me a nincompoop, bro. <laughs> called me a nincompoop, bro. <laughs> oh, oh man, man. <laughs> that's funny. Is that, was it they doing what? Uh, <laughs> What culture? Uh, Nincompoop or something? Like that? No, Numpty. Mm-hmm. Call each other Numpty. On oh, uh, what was it? Uh, what's the? It's not what black culture now. It's the other one. Uh, um, I think I know you're talking about. They all left and they all made their own channel now. Yeah. But King Ross, he calls everybody a numpty. Which is like, yeah, no, yeah. No, no, no variation of him saying yeah. that. I, I called him out on that one. He actually says, I won't go around you near you. I'm like, all right, cool, but still, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't call it. <laughs> Change something else. Oh. Oh man, so you know, you get to UWA. I mean, you talked about your fight to stay there. Um, how was it winning the tag team titles and knowing that you know now, now they have to keep you around because you're the champ. Uh, honestly, <laughs> it's not even that. That was actually the first title I actually ever earned. Okay, first title. Like, I worked with um, Team Shazam at ECBW. Shout out to Team Shazam, Dan the Man, Kenny Bango, of course, TK Luther, Jeanette, all you guys. Um, when I worked with, when I was wrestling with them, I was teaming up with them. I actually didn't really win the titles. I was just an accomplice, you know. And then I actually was holding the belts. Like I understand the free the free bird rule, you know. We all worked together. We all equally did it. And I loved that. I loved them for that. But you know, internally, I didn't earn it. I didn't do it. And I remember having that match. That it wasn't the match I wanted because it was since um, KC couldn't show up because he was hurt. Mm-hmm. We had to substitute, but. I took advantage of the opportunity. The fact that I was the one to get the pin. I was the one to actually finish this thing. Like, that was, like, the biggest moment. Like, I didn't envision how I was going to respond. Like, you know how people sometimes dream how they do their their big speech for the Grammys? Mm. Oh, thank you so much. No, when that pin happened, I literally just froze. My brain, even though my body was moving, mm-hmm. my brain froze for at least five seconds. Oh, man. And I, like, I just leaned back and just saw... The referee just handed me both belts. I was just like, I just don't, I just crawled over the hedges and said, we did it. Okay. We did it. And it was, it was so good. But he pulled me to the back and said, bro, I'm actually happy that you were able to finish the job. Wow. And I mean, that made me feel good. And even Colin West said, I'm happy you got to get the pin. I'm happy you was able to finish it. Nice. Cause it's something that. He already won titles. He's 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 technically a Grand Slam champion for UWA. So yeah. like then it was nothing. It's nothing. But for me, it was something big. Yeah. And now this Saturday, we got a chance to get our titles back. Mm-hmm. We lost them, which I still regret. Like how we lose to a mismatched team. Like 
we literally we really lost our lost our t- uh, titles to Humpty Dumpty with horns and <laughs> and a Napoleon dynamite that has Napoleon syndrome. Like, oh, you, like I I just don't get it. Oh, it's God. it's weird. Like, and it, but you know it is what it is because technically I'm the one that got beat. Yeah. He didn't, so like I took the chin, and then he yeah she actually mocked us. Oh, then she did a promo and mocked us, and I'm like, they did a really good job with Hedges, by the way. <laughs> 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 now it's like he'll 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 spaz, he'll spaz. But um, you know I me, mean? I'm I'm more confident, I'm more cocky. Like you you try to do that, that just fools me up. I'm just not gonna get angry now. I'm gonna wait till the ring we get in the ring, and I'm gonna show you how much I'm angry about your joint. Yeah. You can laugh right now, it's all good. But um. Yeah, like I, it, this is gonna be this my match is is gonna be legit oh, fight. I think it's gonna be a legit fight. Like me on my half, I'm gonna be cool. I'm gonna try to handle my business because he's the high head. I'm technically the cool guy out of the two. I gotta worry about him not disqualifying us. Yeah, because I know one thing. He even though he cared about the belts, he cared about his ego. He cared about himself, which you know all men would. But at the same time, his is like to the point where like he, he triggers because he's known for a temper. Like yeah. everybody think I have a temper. Yeah. My temper can be controlled unless you trigger me. His, there's no trigger. <laughs> I mean, there's no, there's no filter. It's like you say something, I care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> done. You know, it's, it's how it is. Oh man. But, I mean, even though that is a mismatched you know team, um, the history doesn't lie. You know, those guys have won championships. They they are That's mainstays true. in UWA Elite. Mm-hmm. You know, those there are. They are the all stars for, for a reason. So, um, I mean, you, you're gonna have your work cut out. Yeah, I, those guys. Well, I know. Me and Hedge has been actually busting our heart and soul into the gym. Like he's actually been training with me. He's been doing some diligent training, which mm-hmm. actually made me smile. Nice. Like mm-hmm. he, he, like people don't know, he actually lost a lot of weight yeah. in the past, and he just gained, he decided to, to gain it back because he felt like that's better for him. But um, he's training with me to the point where I think like we're gonna actually make a difference. Like I right. think we're not gonna be the same old. Like how you just call us Hedges and Dillinger, it's literally gonna be the designated hitters. Like it's literally gonna be a, a swing to the fences. It's guaranteeing home runs. Yeah. I really think that's gonna happen. I, I just feel it because the like when you know when you lose something, sometimes your ego get away. But if you want something bad enough, like I say, like pulling back Jordan Oliver, you get knocked down. What you gonna do? Are you gonna cry? No. You gonna get up and say, "I want what's mine." Yeah. And I'll be honest, I'm hungry. Nice. So I, I know he is too. I'll, I'll ask uh, a very important question. Uh-oh. When when you guys get the tag team titles back, mm-hmm. are we going to see the chain again? <laughs> see <Honestly>, this level. <laughs> so ask you if you actually win the titles again, are you going to go to Olive Garden and celebrate? Don't listen to him, man. Really? You gotta get that breadsticks, man. Really? The breadsticks. I, I better go to Red Lobster. Red Lobster. Get those biscuits. <laughs> Man, yeah. Come on, man. Meat sauce mafia, bro. <laughs> I know. I know. But uh, to, to your question, you really like that chain, huh? That was nice, man. Yo, you, a lot of guys, they come out with, like, interesting ways to bring the belt out. The Dudley boys just put it around their neck. John Cena had the two belts at the one time. He put yeah, them together. That was like a necklace, yes. Uh, Roman Reigns got the, like, I'm a savage, so I just throw it over my shoulder and cliche. just, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah so, from, uh, Primo and Epico. Yeah, Primo and Epico. Yeah. They did it first. Yeah, no, uh, Carlito and Epico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, I know what you meant. Yeah, uh, yeah. No. Carlito and Yeah, when uh, they had the, yeah, the both and, taxi uh, titles not, and not, they, they put them around Primo, the neck. Primo, yeah. Primo, Carl- yeah. And Primo, yeah. But, <laughs> but this uh the issue question. I, I like it. I know I've never seen like anything look, like that. Don't get me wrong, like honestly, that's that's my that's my thing. Because uh-huh. like, at the end of the day, um I don't I use that chain to remind myself that I still got work to do. Yeah. So like even though I have a belt, I don't want to hold the belt because I still know I gotta get my stuff together mm-hmm. and to remind myself that I still got a long way to go. Yeah. So that cha- me holding a chain like that is actually my trademark to remind myself, Corey, you're not diligent enough yet. You're mm-hmm. just holding this for now. You don't know when you're going to let go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I did get, even though I ain't going to lie, I did get cocky. And if you think about it, I think the day I lost was the day I didn't have the chain. <laughs> so that reminded me something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see? So, yeah, that chain that chain's coming back. But at the same time, I can't do both. I can't do the chain and the vape. <laughs> one, or the, one or the other. I got one or the other, brother. <laughs> That's funny. Too much going on. Yeah, too much going on. Cause mind you, you know, like I have expensive vape collection, and last show I had an ECBW, my my broke. Oh man! And I, I was ticked. Oh, I, I actually lost the match because it actually was ticked. Yeah. And so, I just know now I separate the two. 
I got you. I gotta separate the two. I got you. Where'd got you, you get the hat from, man? That's a nice hat. Hold on, my fedora. Oh yeah. man, that that fedora came from my best friend's father. Oh nice. Um, yes. he was actually one of the main reasons why I embraced Dillinger. Mm-hmm. I embraced that character, even though I'm still Dillinger, like just the, the ruthless side of it. Because we actually, he actually used to run a vape shop called Big Papa Vapor mm-hmm. in Rosa Park. And I was, you know, the cashier. I was uh, learning my vape miles, all that stuff. But he would allow me to do promos in the shop. He would allow me to actually draw people into the shop through my wrestling. Mm-hmm. And he embraced the character. And then when I went out one show, and he said, Corey, I don't think you're ready yet. He's like, why? And he gave me the hat in, the, in the, like, the package. Mm. And I still have that hat. Nice. So it's like, I cherish that hat. So I said to myself, after I've been using it a few times, the next time I'm going to wear this hat is when I get the full Dillinger out. Yeah. And um, to, to explain that, um, you know the game Def Jam Vendetta. Yeah. And yeah. the first one. So yeah. you know D-Mob, right? Yeah, yeah. That's my goal. Nice. I my goal you. is to become D-Mob of professional wrestling. Yeah. You know I said Suge, Suge Knight, but still if you want to be in a PG variation of it, yeah. I want to be D-Mob. Because yeah, yeah, when he yeah. first came in, he was ruthless. He didn't care. He stole your girl. He stole your money. I was going to do whatever he want. But then, you know, he got humbled. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he got out of jail and he actually started making... And he, instead of somebody taking the, the title from him, they gave him a chance to change. Yeah. And he made the code. Yeah. And that's what I want to do. Like, if um, I'm just waiting for somebody to give me this full freedom yeah. for that pump, uh, company, I think uh, one company is going to let me do that because I'm actually going to be debuting at SWF nice. um, June 22nd in right. Jackson. Right. So, um... My goal is gonna be this. So everybody know Luke Cage. Uh-huh. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little do a little teaser. I got this hoodie made uh-huh. that's um with my logo that I have my chest on nice. the back, nice, nice. and it has Dillinger in the pocket. Nice. And I actually got the person to actually make bullet holes to go around the logo. Like Luke Cage. Nice. Yes. Yeah, so like technically to me, I am that grunt work. Yeah. I, but the catch is, I don't work for nobody. True. I work for myself. True. Which I DMO did, and I'm trying to go up the ranks and get my stuff as I want it. And as I go. You'll see me change to slacks. You'll start seeing me change into a button up, and that button up's gonna still have the logo on my back because it's gonna remind me I'm still working for my brand. This is the diligent brand. Oh, I got you. And then I still still vaping whatever. And then once I get my first title shot, or when I get mm-hmm. my first title shot with them, that's when you'll start seeing the fedora got and you. the vape, and everything falls into play. Uh-huh. Will I have people running for me? I don't know. If I do, I already have tons of ideas. Do it, and one thing I'm gonna do is when I do win a title for them, and I have those people, or if I lose it, I'm literally gonna let them free. I'm not gonna, you know, some people try to say you stick with me, you ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna let you free, yeah. and you can come whenever you please, because at the end of the day, we make choices in life. You yeah. made a choice to help me, so I'm gonna choose. I'll help you by making your choice to be free and do whatever you want. Yeah, and you just gotta follow the code. Yeah. And we, I know people say, "What's the code?" You just see the code. You just There's no know explaining. It. That's no, it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That was yeah. a good explanation. Yeah. I like and, that. I like and, that. And um, the name of the team is D Mob. D Mob. Wow. So it's the internal nice, joke. Nice, so nice. the internal <laughs> thing, you know, the idea with Mace off of D Mob, but it's really a diligent mob. Yeah, so like, I got it's, you. Just, it's a double standard. So like, it's yeah. really good. That actually sounds good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, it's telling um, me too. You know, when um, you, you uh, at WOW, you faced uh, Isaac, Isaiah Wolf. Oh, man. And, and then. The people around the ring were saying, you know, romper, romper. Did that get to you? <laughs> <laughs> um, at first, no. <laughs> but when you hear it so many times, I feel like I was getting bullied in school. And I'm like, I'm not wearing a romper. I know I'm wearing a romper, but I'm not wearing a romper, guys. It's not the romper you think I'm wearing. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was a funny ex- That was a fun experience, man. Shout out to, to uh, Warriors of Wrestling. <laughs> like, real good people. <laughs> they, they, they're very creative with their stuff. But yeah, like it, it did annoy me at yeah. the end. At the end, it annoyed me. But in the beginning, I was just like this. Are right, you just saying you're joining? I'm playing. I'm, I'm working. Your hometown <laughs> dude. You, y'all don't really know me. I only been there twice. I'm gonna make. This, I'm gonna put this work. And I think in that match, I put that work. Even though I did slip up, and um, he legitly got was about to break my arm. Oh, oh, man. Man. Legit. Like if you look closer in the video, usually any person who has it arm gives like a little give. He actually had his arm, my arm tucked under his armpit. Uh, ready to extend his back. Wow. I felt my arm. I felt <laughs> once I felt my wrist on his armpit. I'm like, okay, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna take my arm. Nope. 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 Oh, no. 
Because I already felt the pressure. And I'm like, nope, I'm not going any further. So, like, and, and the funny part that was actually the um, match. That's one of my matches I love because it was organic. Yeah. We didn't we didn't talk. We just yeah. actually just went. Oh, man. So cute. shout out to Wolf, man, so like, and, shout, and shout out to your no limit it's, run, man. It's I, just put that out there. So now we know how to get to you, man. Oh, not anymore. No, 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 that was that one time only, man. Listen, I embraced the romper. Romper made me sexy. That was at the time rompers were like popular too. And it was controversial too at the same time. Yeah, because like why are men wearing rompers? You know the the funny thing. You one. No, I didn't wear no Rocker, romper. You know, romper. No, what? No, but <laughs> well, he didn't. He didn't have the romper. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, that you bring it back, it. man. Bring no, it back. no thanks. You bring that back. It, it's funny today because I went on Facebook today. You know how they always show you your the memories? memories. So from last year, I shared a memory, and it was like just picture Hulk Hogan. He's ripping his T-shirt, right? Mm-hmm. And the meme reads. When the romper is still on and the diarrhea is coming. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> is ripping his shirt off. Oh, it's, it's so funny you brought that up. It's like, that's hilarious. Came out of nowhere. Really? That's funny, man. That's hilarious. You definitely got to get a romper, man. Yeah, no, 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 no. He good. He good. I'm good. I think rompers. Yeah, should, I think first of all, rompers should be special editions, not generic going to retail. Yeah, the sugar crew yeah. playing rompers, man. Yeah, that's, that's one cool. guy. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm good, man. Like shout out to the shoe crew. That's one guy though. Yeah, no rompers ain't Come for on, me. Like uh, Matt Cass- Cassidy, I mean, he's wearing dress on Raw and stuff like that. Come on, man, you can bring back the romper. Yeah, no, this well, sounds like you. You want? These. Yeah, you can do the romper. Yeah, remember, yeah, remember, rompers are not made for just guys who are in shape, brother. You know, yeah. they, they, the rompers for the love one, the one that got the love in a in a, in a muffin. You know, yeah. no, I'm Jewish. Can't look like MVP up. out there. That's a lie. <laughs> Oi, you can't. That's a lie. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. man. So I like so I my my final question. I ask you. Oh, final question. So bro. I feel like I feel like you're a good person to ask this to. Okay. Anyone getting into business, what's the best advice you can give them? I got a bucket list for that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but um, to keep it a uh, condensed version, uh-huh. um, come there humble with your ears wide open. Yeah. A lot of people come there because they see the flashing lights. They mm-hmm. see all that stuff. But you understand, it's a lot of grunt work before the, the flashing lights. Mm-hmm. And you have to be understanding <coughs> that you're playing a part. You're a small gear in this big system. Yeah. And you, your gear can grow, but you have to learn how to pick up the chips. Yeah. And then be patient. If you're not patient, I respect that. But if you're going to make that move, make it count. Because yeah. as soon as you fail... Now you have to question yourself, what can I do now? Yeah. That's the main thing I tell you. Nice. Awesome. I like that. That's good. So, Corey, where can people get you on social media if they want to connect with you? Uh, I need to fix that. Yeah, a lot of stuff. I got to fix that. <laughs> um, if you want to catch me, guys, you can catch me on um, Facebook at Corey Dillinger, C-O-R-E-Y, D-I-L-L-I-N-G-E-R. Just put that out there. If you're trying to find me on Instagram, which technically you'll find me a lot on, I actually do a lot of live feeds there. That would be C. Dillinger. And I'll spell it again D I L L I N G E R. And if you're trying to find me on Twitter, which I don't like, but I'll still work with you guys, is the diligent one D A D I L I G E N T O N E. Nice. That's like some double Jeff. Jared, you caught on, you caught on, brother. You caught on, brother. But, uh, I was like, you feel like that double yeah. F. Double yeah. D, double I, double L, double I, double N, double G. Hold on, hold on. Before we let that, um, supposed to plugs out real quick if you don't mind. Awesome, yeah. So remember the guys, this Saturday in South River, New Jersey, UWA Elite presents Living on the Edge. I, me and my boy Hedges, the designated hitters, will be getting our rematch claws, not claws, claws, with... Brand in the bowl and King Tech, Mr. Vietnam Midget. <laughs> oh, We're going to do our thing there. Also, I'm debuting SWF June 22nd in Jackson. Do you know how I'm going to debut? No. You got to go in there to find out. And also, shout out to everyone that actually took the time to listen to this podcast. Shout out to everyone that always take the time to listen to these two guys. These guys are great. These guys are amazing. And they just started from the bottom. So if they can do it, you can do it too. Definitely. But be humble about it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. For us, we're Wrestling IQ 101. Sometimes. You can, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook page, all of that, at Wrestling IQ 101. Wait, what about YouTube? YouTube, uh, yeah, yeah right we're on here, YouTube yeah. too. Sure YouTube.com you backslash Wrestling IQ 101. Make sure you subscribe to the page. 
Uh, you can listen to us on the B Plus Player Network. Uh, make sure you check us out, uh, collarandelbowbrand.com. Use our code WIQ101. Yeah. You get an additional 10% off. See that fuck oh. money. All oh, that good oh, stuff. Oh, sorry. Let me to cut you off, guys. Speaking of t shirts, I will be having new t shirts awesome. coming out soon. Oh, Even though I got a reshipment of the, I call it the Marvel version the Marvel, of the, yeah. the Marvel <laughs> version of CD. Yeah. If you look closely, I'm going to have a DC version of CD. Nice. Which is oh, actually, nice. if you look, I'll give you a hint. If you actually pay attention to my gear and see the logo on my chest, that's uh-huh. the exact logo. Nice. Awesome. Um, nice. The catch is, is um, it's going to be with Dan Ram. It's going to be with tough ram designs yeah. they decided to actually go digital soon so you if you need shirts you can go to their website i'll awesome. gladly have the links and plugs in the future if y'all need it and if not you can always find me on facebook or any of my social media spots to get the shirts exclusives and plus i throw a little autograph in there nice, nice. awesome that sounds good sounds like you get the ink you get the shirt you know you get the in a free little, picture. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Look at that smile, man. <laughs> awesome. Cool. I don't smile. No? <laughs> well, Corey, we definitely yeah. appreciate you coming on the show. No we worries. Really thank you for taking the time no out, man. answering all our questions, giving us some great combo as well. Yeah, we appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. And we are out. You have just listened to the Wrestling IQ 101 podcast, powered by B Plus Player Radio. One more for the good guy.